Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? I hope you're doing well. I'm great. Hanging outside with the dogs. Puppy's finally starting to go to sleep. He has been very, very hyper these last couple of days. Hey, Topi. Good boy, Topi. July 31st. Time for the July garden tour. Okay, well, technically it's the 30th. Gotta film it a day in advance, right? And wouldn't you know, the day before a garden tour, we'd have a storm and it would start knocking my plants over. I've been out here for a good part of the morning doing some cleanup and some tidying, just trying to pick up the pieces. That's, you know, that's what happens. Storms come through. They knock things over sometimes. This did give me an opportunity to do some pruning on this queen palm. It needed it. It had some lower limbs on it that were looking kind of wonky and they were done. So I pruned those off. There's a third one just laying over there in the rubble. I'll go ahead and get that picked up, but it's out of the way. So there's some plants over here in the background we can talk about. I to try and get over the gate. There we go. Come back here and get some better close-ups of some of the plants that I've been keeping back in the more light that's filtered, filtered light. Don't know why I had to say that so oddly. The Gloriosum is doing well. It does have a couple of leaves on it that look like they're ready to go. I've been keeping an eye on it to make sure that it's not getting too much water. And I'm starting to think that maybe it is. It's definitely been happy. It's been doing a lot of growing. I mean, you can see, look at the size of that runner in there. It's big and girthy, has a new growth coming up out of it, but that is pretty wet. Although it did, it rained most of the night, so it's kind of hard to judge that. I'm gonna keep a closer eye on it. This leaf that it opened up looks pretty good. There's some damage on it. That's just kind of the way things go when you're growing things outdoors, unfortunately, but the coloration's nice. It's not quite as large as the others. Just attribute that to this maybe not getting quite enough light or perhaps even too, there's no way it's getting too much. No, it looks like there's a lot on it right now, but that's not how it always is. That's just because the palm tree that's right where I'm standing is laying on the ground. And I also have my crystallinum down here that threw up a bunch of new growth. Some came out kind of wonky, but considering I thought this was a goner after the last storm that we had, I'm fairly pleased with it. There's been a lot of growth coming out of there. I do think it would be smart probably to swap these positions though, just a smidge and pull this forward because this feels really dry and this feels sopping wet and the misters are just to the side. So that way maybe this won't get quite as much and the crystalline will get some more. I would think that it would be okay with that. That should be good for it. All ocasias that got planted up in here with the bamboos, they're looking Pretty nice. The one over here that's on the right of where the palm tree should be, I'll set that back up in just a moment, has done a lot more growing than the one that's on the left. But this one also got smashed during the storms back in June. So I'm not terribly shocked by that. So it had a pretty big dieback, but it's looking okay. These alocasias though, I love them. The undersides of their foliage, so, so, so pretty. These are plumbe metallicas, I believe. Actually, these might be, um, Yucatan Princess. I bought them as Plumbe Metallicas. Yucatan Princess is becoming much more common and uh, I have some Plumbe Metallicas and their foliage is not anywhere near as elongated and pointy as these. It's a smidge bit more rounded, but the undersides are very similar. Oh, whatever they are. They're very pretty. I love the texture on them. Nice, firm, stiff leaves. They seem nice and happy. Ficus down here seems pretty happy. Another plant that I think I should probably move into some more sun. I think it would be happier if it were getting more light. It's starting to lean and stretch. I will probably be pulling some things and doing some little bits of maintenance as we walk around and look at the plants, just because with the, the whole the puppy situation, I have not had a lot of time to tend to things, just been watering and scooting things around and trying to maintain order, but not really improve it. You know what I mean? The garden beds have been coming along wonderfully. They're nice and lush, very full. I do think I'm going to come in here and pull out all of the lantana, which is unfortunate because it's so pretty. And I really like the pop of color that it adds in here. But from everything I've been reading about the lantana, it's like kind of a risky thing to have around dogs. And I gotta say that puppy, he has an extremely curious mouth. He's never allowed outside of this little playpen area unsupervised because of the plants and the dangers that they might pose to him. But still, it only takes half a second for him to stick something in their mouth that they shouldn't. So I think just for peace of mind, I'm probably gonna pull those up, but we can get one last look at them. 
There they are. They haven't done a ton. I mean, they've put on some size and they've flowered a bunch, but as the seasons progress, the angle of the sun's changed. They're not getting as much light as they probably should be getting to really get nice and bushy. So pulling them out is really not that big of a deal anyways. Not a lot of the traded skin to, to really shine. I am constantly pulling pumpkins from here, always. So many pumpkins. Oh, there's a lot of flowers on this little vine for something that's so tiny. And there's some weeds. There are gonna be weeds. This is, I didn't go to a extreme extent trying to make sure things were perfect. I really rarely ever do that for garden tours. I like to show things in their natural state. I never want there to be a gigantic mess, but I mean, the reality is in gardens, sometimes we have weeds and things that need to be trimmed and pruned and, and that's just the way it goes, right? It's not a look at how fancy my garden is. It's a here's where we're at right now. And I'm liking where we're at. Things are looking really pretty. Like here, the crinum lily, that is a Persephone crisp lily. I believe that's how it's pronounced. This one has proved to be really, really cold hardy. I've had it for several years. That clump gets bigger and bigger and bigger every year. I should probably divide that up actually next spring when it starts to pop out of the ground. They're listed as hardy to zone 6B. I'm on the line of 6A, 6B. I always forget, I have to make a point about that. Okay, so here's the deal. All the tropicals go inside during the winter. The bananas, the colocasias that are down here, those stay outside. The gingers that are in the ground, there's a whole bunch of those gingers over there. And then I have another clump of them right over here. They stay in the ground, they just get mulched and they come back every year. But so when you see something like this, that's no, that does go inside during the winter time. Sometimes I forget to point that out and then I get comments from people who aren't familiar with the channel and they're like, how are you? What's going on here? Like this doesn't make sense. No, the palm trees, they don't stay out all winter. The big ones go off to a greenhouse. There's a company here where I live in St. Louis that takes your big plants and they store them during the winter time. So that's what happens with those. Dune grass is doing so well. It's starting to look a little bit messy. That's pretty normal. I've noticed usually the closer you get to August, it starts to get more of a floppy appearance to it. And I don't know if that's the like the change in the sunlight that they're getting, or if that's just because that's the nature of dune grass that tends to grow up and hang and be really wispy and blow in the wind. I love the texture that these have with the seed heads on them. Such a pretty plant. And the contrast with that blue to the green to some of the darker tones that are in these bikini teeny colocasias here. I just love it. Really vigorous, easy, easy, easy plants. They just do their thing and go nuts. That's sort of a theme right here with the bananas, those elephant ears, and then that dune grass is just through one of each in the ground. And then here we are several years later. Filled that spot in quite nicely, a little bit too nicely. I did start to move these colocasias further back last year, but they run. They go wherever they want to go. And that cold spell we had in February was so bad that I wasn't even sure if they were going to survive. Same thing with the gingers and the bananas. So I didn't bother doing any pulling with them when they started to come up. I wanted to just leave them and let them do their thing, make sure they can put out really strong, healthy roots this year so that there's plenty to survive next winter should we have another Arctic blast. Hopefully we won't. Hopefully that was just a fluke, but you never know, right? But I do think it would look nice for these to be set back further and to have a row of some annuals or something in the front that could line from here, maybe all the way down to the side of the house like some sun impatience. That'd be really pretty. Not that those aren't pretty, they're very pretty. I do enjoy them. They have a fun jungle appearance. When these get more sun, they stand more upright than these are right now, but they fill up with water in the middle and then they fall down and the water pours out of them. It's fun to watch from that window in there and see the rain falling on them and they all spill forward. It's like they're doing a little elephant ear dance. And I am loving the view out of this window. I cannot wait for the gingers that are out here to start blowing. There's going to be some beautiful, just like creamy orange flower spikes coming off of those. The banana cannas down in the corner are going to come up even higher, much higher. They should at least double the size, hopefully in the next several weeks. The passion vine is starting to come over and wisp across that window. That'd be pretty if that'll flower where I can actually see it from the kitchen. I doubt it will. That would be really neat. Then of course, all the pretty flowers are planted here underneath this Alexander palm along with, there's a light view, a gentle view. It's easy to see in person. There's a Roya here in the center with some Heliconias planted around it. Oh, it's so pretty. Once those flowers start going, there's gonna be butterflies and hummingbirds and it's just, oh, it's gonna be an absolutely beautiful magical window. I love this spot and I love this view. The sun is very harsh. It's There is an abrupt change because it just randomly started to rain. So I popped inside puppies, 
had a nap and he's waking up and things are dried off again, but it's a, it's like a weird overcast. The lighting, it's not good. That's okay. I'm gonna take this guy back outside. You ready to go? You ready to go? Oh, hold on though. Gotta get your collar. Okay, there we go. Are you ready to go? You ready to go? Let's go outside. Come on. Good boy. Okay, all right, apparently we're skipping over that thing where he's supposed to sit. Oh, and he's just going for it. Okay. Right to the lawn. That's a good boy. Good boy, Turbo. Fern Garden. Oh, it's not looking great. I had to shut all the irrigation off over here because this entire area just kept flooding and uh, it turned out that there's a broken valve inside one of my drip timers. The water was just running basically continuously. So I capped off that line and the, well, you can see how the ferns are looking because of it. We went a while without rain up until last night. It was pretty dry here, but things have started to moisten up. Finally, the needle palms need some clean and there's some wild grapes starting to grow inside this one and take over that. I don't ever update these. They grow really slow, so there's never much to say about them, really. I can go ahead and get this out of there. Get out of there, weeds. I'll get the rest of those later. More plants that I figured would have died in that freeze back in February, but here they are. Still doing okay. These have gotten very big, really large old plants. And the hot tub wall got planted up a few weeks ago. It's looking nice. The plants are doing well, filling out and things are pretty lush. I think that they are enjoying the lighting over here as well as the water, particularly the sea hibiscus. This thing is growing like insanity. When I repotted it, I talked about how I well, it needs to go into a bigger pot. That was a big part of it. And I got it into a soil blend that was going to hold on to moisture for just a little bit longer than what it was already in. What I had it potted up in before was a coconut blend that the water just moved through it so, so, so fast. That was making it difficult to get it saturated and have it to hold on to the moisture. So this is a blend that's got the cocoa, some old, just like all purpose potting mix, mix in with it and more organic matter. So it's really, holding onto that moisture a lot better. And it's up on drip now, and I have it on a drip emitter that runs quite, quite heavily. I don't know how many gallons per hour it is. It's one of those adjustable, adjustable? Adjustable stakes. Water goes in here and you turn this piece up top to adjust how much water comes out. And I have it up on pretty much full blast, at least as close as I could get it to. Full blast had the water moving outside the pot. So I dialed it down somewhat. There's also some nasturtium down in there. I had to give that a pretty heavy prune, but it's already starting to come back, has some flowers on it. Well, a flower. There's one tiny flower on it down there. And then a variegated sun and patient. That one is called Tropical Rose. And the, these were all just potted up. So they still have some time to go until they start to look really nice. But this plant I am so happy with. Done really well, getting all different colors out of each leaf. There's tons of variation in the leaves on this one. So you have those darker coppery, sometimes reddish tones on the new leaves that come out. And some of them age out to just looking like green leaves. And then there's some that look like a painting and they're absolutely stunning. <laughs> there's another one over here. There's a puppy chewing on my tripod. Excuse me. Like that, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'm trying to hold the camera steady, but we got a very curious mouth running around right below the tripod. Yeah, beautiful plant. Loving the variegated sea hibiscus. The, uh, is it limelight? I believe Dracaena that's over here. Some, I can never remember if it's limelight or lemon lime. I'm pretty sure it's limelight. And then sometimes I get confused with lime thyme, which is a coleus, right? Yes. Either way, this Dracaena, it is doing well. I was worried about it maybe getting too much sun in the spot when I initially put it over here, but it's newest foliage that's been pushing out since I moved to this spot isn't as yellow and light as the stuff from before. So actually I think it's getting a little bit less light than it was where it was before. So that's perfect because I was concerned about getting too much light. It probably helps that it's <laughs> sheltered and protected here by the freckles croton who has absolutely exploded with new growth. I repotted this in the springtime and then this also got up on drip. Uh, everything that's in this area is on drip. So the majority of the yard is on drip at this point. But once this got onto drip, it just started throwing out new leaves all over the place. There's even some new growths coming up. I think it might be a good idea to get in here with some stakes and some string and put some support in to help hold all this growth up because it really is, it's all very splayed out and it's shading the heliconias that are underneath it. So I think that it does look nice. It has a fun kind of wild tropical appearance when it comes out in that form. I just think that for the plant's sake, it would be better if it had some more <laughs> growth <laughs> going upright. What are you playing with right now? <laughs> it's like something from a horror movie. <laughs> just hear 
monster puppy sounds and a tiny little ball come rolling up from under the table. Oh, there he is. Hey, bud. The heliconias are doing well. They're doing quite nice. Look at all those flowers in there. They're so pretty. Those are plants up with some vinca down below it. Another plant that I have to keep away from the puppy. That's why there's this pin here. I really think I'm going to probably going ahead and pull those and uh, either put something else there or just leave it be. I think that the blue pot that that's in is really nice looking. I don't necessarily have to have something coming over the front, but you know how I do. I may end up throwing a Creepin' Jenny in there just because I would like that contrast. And I love Creepin' Jenny. There's so much Creepin' Jenny in this backyard. Arika palms throwing out new growth. Lots and lots and lots of new growth, which is fantastic. There were some concerns about it when I moved outside in the late spring early winter that I was concerned about maybe some rot, but it's come back nicely and it's looking pretty good. It's barely even in frame. It's all about the trunks on these though. Look at those trunks, beautiful. The variegated basket grass that's planted just beneath it is looking very colorful and pretty. This is a plant that gets a pretty wild appearance to it. Horribly invasive in areas where it can grow as a perennial. Here it's just an annual. They can't survive the winters here, so I don't have to worry about that. Such a pretty, airy appearance on that one. It's one of my favorite trailers, is this variegated basket grass. Speaking of variegation, this Dracaena has gone nuts. It's doing great out here this year. I don't know why I said this year. So usually this one is just in my house. I don't move this out often. So that's probably hasn't been out here in three years. It seems to really be enjoying life outside. The deck planters still have a ways to go. They just got planted up not too long ago. But eventually those petunias will start coming over the front. The heliconias will fill out and those impatience will start to take off and put out all kinds of color. There's, what else is over here? Oh, the Veronica. The Wizard of Oz Veronica that I planted up here in the seashell with that silver brocade Artemisia. That's also doing really well. I'm enjoying how that's looking. I needed to come in and give this a cut and I didn't do it. And I probably should have because now it's starting to butt out with some more growth. It'll be okay though. I can probably still go in and just do a more meticulous pruning on any pieces that need to come out and help lighten the load and make it look nicer. Basically get the, the old dead stuff out of there. The ginger that's next to it, it has tons of new growth coming up from in there. I think I may have thrown some caladiums in there too. I'm not positive. Well, I think so, because I see something coming up there that's not ginger, so it's more than likely the caladiums. We will see. More caladiums over here with a very thirsty Akuba right next to them. Apparently that drip head got pulled out, so that's good to know. I'm gonna get that fixed. This is a frog in a blender caladium. One of my favorites. I've had that one for years. So many toys, yet gotta go after the towel. I got the queen palm set back up. It's looking weird. I, I'm not used to seeing it without all the foliage on it, but this is much better for it. It didn't need all those extra branches, and actually I think I should probably come in and cut this frond off that's right here just to balance it out better. There's no reason for it to be devoting energy to keeping a branch alive that's stuck inside the pine tree that's mostly shaded. It's not going to do much for helping the plant grow, so why keep it there, right? I'm probably gonna cut that out. The stuff that's planted underneath it, well, it's smushed, because you know, you saw it, the palm tree fell on top of it. It'll be all right. Always is, it'll bounce back, not the end of the world. Over here with the Monstera, there's an orchid that's been blooming for many, many weeks and it's looking great. And then the Metanilla that's in here is covered, absolutely covered in blooms. That is going to be putting on a show. I mean, it already is, but in just a few weeks, this is going to look stunning over here. And actually there's some Monstera leaves that are getting in the way. I think we're going to need to move those. They're kind of ruining the view here. They're beautiful, but there I can see at least one, maybe two flower spikes that are underneath there that are gonna get hit by those. So I'll probably just take a string and pull them back just for a few weeks so we can get to enjoy those flowers. All of the things that were planted up here underneath the Adenidia palm are looking very nice. There's a spring fling caladium over here. There's the Florida Beauty caladium next to it. That's the green with the spots and then the caladium fiesta right next to it. So there's a fun little, you know, Caladium rainbow going on there. Aren't these spring fling caladiums just absolutely beautiful? I, there's something that's a little bit weird about them. I am obsessed with the contrast that they have between the leaf and the veins. In person, this is a pretty, it almost looks like a highlighter. Like someone took a green highlighter and went in there and lit that up. It doesn't have a ton of leaves on it and it's already gone to flower. So I, I guess it's happy, seems to be. It's, and it should keep growing. They'll all keep doing their thing. Has nice big leaves on it. Begonia underneath it, 
doing well. And then this Caladium over here is one of my favorites. I have no idea what the variety is called. It was just sold as an assorted premium Caladium. Whatever that means, wish it had a name. Isn't it gorgeous? I love the leaf on that. More of that variegated basket grass there with another Florida Beauty Caladium that I do not recall planting here. I only had three bulbs and they're coming up in three different, four different spots. So maybe a chunk fell out of one and I plopped it in there. I'm not really sure. That's fine. I kind of like these containers over here to take on somewhat of a, not sorry, a wild appearance, but I want them to look like they weren't overly thought out. Does that make sense? Maybe, yes, no, hopefully. A tiny Persian shield. This is right here, lots of foliage, which is what I was going for. Persian shield, Alpinia, Zorimba, Variegata in the back, just variegated shell ginger right there. Beautiful at nighttime because there's a lamp right up above here that helps get that whole spot reflecting and glowing in the evening. And then the Pseudoranthemum. Is that what it is? Did I get it right? Anytime I talk about this plant, I go, I can't say its name. I don't remember what it is. Did I get it right this time? Okay, partially got it right. Pseudoranthemum, black varnish. I hold on to these tags just to be sure. Yeah, isn't that a lovely plant? I can't really say anything bad about it. The leaves do get dusty looking. That's one thing I did notice. I thought that maybe it had spider mites on it and I was inspecting it and rubbing it. And I even put tape on one of the undersides. So I was like, can I peel anything up? And I didn't see anything. Also, this container and anything that was running off the drip from this area went nearly a week without being watered because somebody shut the water off at the side of my house and didn't inform me. And one day I was out here and I was like, I don't understand why everything looks so thirsty. It's, there's no reason for that when everything's up on drip and after like, I don't know, a good hour of troubleshooting with my timer, it just turned out that someone had Turn the water off at the house. I live in a cul-de-sac and the people who maintain the garden area in the cul-de-sac for some reason tap into the water on my house whenever they're doing that. And then they almost never turn it back on and they never tell me when they're here. So it seems like this happens once a year, but it's okay. That is however, when I noticed these old leaves starting to lose their shine was when I was like, oh, these are thirsty. They had wilted down. They're looking sad, gave it a drink, perked back up and like <laughs> within a week, shot up a whole new growth right there. So it's a forgiving plant. And that's always a win. Gotta love a plant that can take some stress and bounce right back from it. There's the pond. Do we wanna talk about the pond? I don't really wanna talk about the pond. It just really doesn't get the sun that it needs to grow like it used to. The pine trees above it have started to shade it so much that the water lilies, they don't, they're not interested in blooming at all. I've been fertilizing them. I went from once a month to about every two weeks now, been dropping fertilizer tablets in there. It's just not enough light for them, but the water's clean. There's a few goldfish left that the bullfrogs didn't get, and I like the mini cattails. The mini cattails are super cute. Look at the tiny little cattail. Isn't that just adorable? I love that. Oh, I do have some fun plants back here, though. These are the Pharaoh's Mask Colocasias. They're still little babies, they have some growing to do, but I think I may actually unpot them and pot them down here into this container so that they can just get some more nutrient. I think the mix that they're in is kind of barren. And there aren't a ton of fish in the water like there used to be, so the water's not super rich with nutrients either. Oh, and yes, this is, this is what it's supposed to look like. It's supposed to look sickly. That's the selling point for some reason. There's a better shot of the blooms in that Medanella as I'm walking past there. Underneath this leaf, I have what? One, two, uh, three. There's three different buds, flower spikes. Those are hidden away under here. I figure I'll probably just take this leaf and like strap it over here, something like that, and do something similar with this one. I'm not gonna prune them off because the Monstera's gonna hold onto their leaves for such an incredibly long time. It'd be a shame to cut one off. That seems unnecessary, but I would like to get those out of the way. That way those can really shine and look their best and stand out. Cause it's a, it's a big deal getting this many flower spikes on a metanella. You just don't see them flush out this heavily all that often. Really you don't. Generally, you know, you're lucky to get maybe two to three spikes out of these every single year. And this one, I, I don't even know how many there are in here. One, two, three, four, five. There's around 14 spikes on here. There's some more around the back. I'm gonna want that to stand out. I'm gonna wanna be able to, so yeah, I'm gonna have to do something with that leaf. It's in the way, I don't want that in the way of the, that pretty view. The bamboos, those are filling out quite nicely, really looking lush. That's what I was going for and what I was wanting there. I think that this winter I'm gonna be really happy that I put those in those containers. I've always done tropicals in these blue pots. There's a blue pot right here and another one over there. And uh, 
it's nice during the summertime and looks really pretty with tropicals in them, but being in zone six and living someplace where there's a lot of plants that die off during the winter time, I wanted something that was evergreen or semi evergreen to maintain the privacy and just to bring some life to the backyard when everything else is dead and dreary looking. And that's one last thing to have to replant and deal with every single spring too. So I'll be able to stay in these pots for a few years, which is fine. They'll eventually get to a point where they'll need to be pulled, divided, probably have a root trim and get potted back up and whatever I divide out of them, I can give away something like that. Uh, I'll figure it out. These are the yellow growth bamboos. Where I live, the yellow growth bamboos do fairly well. They don't sell a ton of different varieties of bamboo here. This is like pretty much the only one I see around for sale at the local nurseries. You can order bamboo online, but getting really large established plants costs an absolute fortune and it's it's not that easy to find online either. If I'm gonna spend a lot of money on something, I really like to see it in person. I think it's nice to be able to support the local nurseries who are getting them in. So that's why I just went with the yellow grove, even though there were some other types that I probably would have liked better, particularly because here the yellow groves, unless they're planted in a nice sheltered location, they do tend to get pretty brown and defoliate during the winter time. So I'll have some options during the winter as to what to do about that. I can definitely wrap them up with some frost cloth, just to help protect them from the wind. Maybe give them a spray of some wilt proof. Again, just to help keep there from being too much transpiration from the wind, blowing the moisture out of their foliage. Or I could just lay them down on their sides during times of extreme cold and cover them up. I don't know, I don't really need to worry about that right now. And even if they do defoliate during the winter time, it's okay, it's bamboo. They'll put up new shoots and start looking great within no time the following year, the next spring. Yeah, I admit, it's really pretty. I know not everybody's a fan of bamboo, but there's something airy and almost ethereal about it that's just calming and tranquil and cooling when it's hot outside and seeing it in the wind and in the breeze. You know, I like it, makes me happy. Okay, the pool planters. So this one, as you just saw, got hit by like a 14 foot palm tree last night. So. Let's not judge this one. That doesn't really seem fair. This one, however, well, the Maui Gold Colocasias did what I thought they might do and got absolutely massive, but that's okay. That's what I wanted. I wanted a lot of impact. I wanted them to be bold and vibrant with the Heliconias shooting up out of the middle here. These are the Chocanianas, the Chocaniana Heliconias. And then there are some Heliconia Hirsutas in here as well that are gonna come up even higher from that mix and they have more of a reddish bract on them as opposed to that orange right there. Hey bud, can I help you? You're okay, you're fine. He's developed an obsession with the tripod. I'm gonna go down here where he can't see me. He's barking because he wants to eat the tripod. That's all that is. So here's the outer view of that window, which is what I should have cut to after showing you the view from inside, but the puppy, you know, you saw what happened. He needed to go to the grass. This is a very, very warm spot in my garden. The gingers are already starting to spike up. These were just put in here last year. So they haven't put on much growth since then. They were just divisions that got put in sometime around July. And uh, this one over here is doing the least. That one's doing a lot. And then this one right here, it has a lot of growth coming out. One of them got knocked over by Toby when he was running around in here trying to find something, but that's all right. There's more than enough growth on here to get lots and lots of color out of them. There's those banana cannas back there and you can see the passion flower comes from down here and it's going up the side of the house there. That should be putting out some blooms here pretty soon. Scrub palms or the sable miners, they are very happy. They've been throwing out leaves much faster than I ever would have expected from them. Sable miners aren't always the fastest of growers, but these have been pretty happy here. I thought I saw a flower spike coming out of one of them, but I think it was just a leaf. I got ahead of myself. They've only been in the ground for a year though, so I'm not too surprised by that. In this container, oh, oh, that caladium. That is beautiful. I think that's Raspberry Moon or Mesmerized. No, that's gotta be Raspberry Moon. I planted two different caladiums in here. There's the Mesmerized and then the Radiance. And well, that doesn't look like any of those at all, does it? it looks more like a caladium bicolor. So that's fun. Don't know why it looks like that, but I'll take it. It's beautiful. Persian Shield that's back here underneath the Alexander Palm. Look at it. It's so full. That was a lot of hand in the camera, I'm sorry very lush. It's turning into its own little bush there. I also put one of the Pharaoh's Mask elephant ears in here too, and it's growing differently than all of the others. Pardon my shadows. It's just the time of day. Can't really do much about it. This one, it actually, to me, is resembling more of a bikini teeny, isn't it? So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's in their blood 
wouldn't shock me one bit. The begonia dragon wings that are in here and the heliconias have been doing well, but the sun is really intense here in the afternoon. I think it, it might be actually too much for them. But as the season progresses in a week or so, it's going to be less and less light here. So I'm not gonna bother pulling them out. I'm just you know, gonna hope that they hold on for a couple more weeks. And actually it's cooling off quite a bit. So it was like 98 yesterday and extremely humid, but the next several days, it's supposed to be in the 80s with low humidity. It's like going to be actually pretty beautiful. I'm really looking forward to next week. But because of that, I'm like, okay, just leave them, wait and see what happens. Okay, we good? Yes, much better. Camera overheated, so came over and stuck it in front of the fan for a few minutes. Which is okay, because he gave me some time to play with the pup. When he stopped whining, I came over and gave him some attention. And now he's tired again. Over here, underneath the Robolini palm, things are looking extremely vibrant and colorful. This variegated tropical rose sun and patient it just, it has gone nuts. Actually, I think I need to come out in here and prune this leaf out of the Strelitzia that's behind it because it's shading things. But back here in this container, if I can even get back here, I'm gonna try and squeeze back. That's in the way. That's gotta go. I'm gonna bend it backwards for now. I'll come back and prune it here in a few minutes. I know that may have seemed harsh to some people. This, it grows so incredibly fast. It's fine. The lower growths need to be pruned out regardless. Needed to get that done. Pink dragon wing begonia in here. Very pretty. The other, one of the other Florida Beauty Caladiums is back there. And I put some frog in a blenders in here, but I think that the vigor of the begonia, the Persian shield that's behind everything combined with the uh, tropical rose sun and patient here, I think it may have just been too much for it. I don't, I think it got out competed. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. There's also a really pretty cupfia in here that you're probably not going to be able to see. This has gotten too big. It's down there, you can't really see it. I need to come in and do some rearranging with this spot. In fact, I have a whole entire planter setting here that I'm gonna pull up. This is Luscious Royale Cosmo Lantana. Beautiful flowers, I love that one. And there's a uh, Ascot Rainbow Euphorbia behind it and then an Evolvulus down below. And these are toxic, so they gotta go. I need to move those. Don't want the dog chewing on them, especially that Euphorbia. Those are all getting moved, I think the Gerber Daisy, They're, that should be able to stay. Haven't heard anything too bad about those with the animals. Andromeda Heliconia, very red and very happy. The leaves are cupped on this one. I need to repot it. These need so much amending in their soil. Lots and lots of nutrient. And if they dry out even slightly when it's warm, their leaves cup up and it's outgrown its container. So it's hard to keep it hydrated. So I'm gonna give that a repot here sooner than later. And that Rostrata. I love it. Love the color and the contrast on that one. That's the big croton over here. Doing its thing, loving life, nice and big. And the hanging basket, it, it's not beautiful by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it's, it doesn't look great, but I'm shocked that it's held on through the heat of the summer so far. There's still a good amount of pansies in there. I was going to replant this up with petunias and do a summer container with it back at the end of June, early July. And well, everything in it still looks so nice that I just couldn't bring myself to tear it apart, so I left it. And now I'm somewhat regretting it, but I can't imagine we're going to have a ton of weather left that's where things are going to be nearly 100 degrees outside. So I think that I should probably give this a nice prune and probably add some amendments into that basket, into that soil to help liven it back up and should be looking pretty good here in about a month and be a beautiful fall hanging basket, even though I planted it up for spring. Yeah, like I said, it's not looking amazing, but I'm pretty shocked that it's even still growing. There is a very large and gorgeous mandevilla back there by the house, but you can't even see it because the gingers have filled this spot in. So I actually may come in and pull that out and move it someplace where, one, it's going to need more light. It's getting shaded from this ginger and where it can be appreciated because it's big. You know, it goes all the way over here to over there and it's coming up the side of the house. And it's still in its nursery container. I just put a drip in it because there are a lot of pipes back here against the side of the house. So I couldn't plant it in the ground and it's done wonderfully. So I can just go ahead and lift that back out. I'll probably do that here pretty soon, actually. Bananas, nice, big, happy, loving life. It smells amazing over here. The oh so easy Italian ice roses. I planted those up, I don't know, a month or so ago. They were done flowering at the time when I planted them up. So this is their first flush since I 
put them here in the ground. It smells so fantastic over here. Just, I mean, it smells like roses. There's a whole drift of them here with the heliconias right in front of them, which was an afterthought. I know it would make much more sense for these to be behind the roses, but I got the heliconias after I got the roses and I really wanted those planted over here. And they're doing really well too. Lots of blooms on them. More spikes coming up from inside. The hummingbirds and pollinators have really been enjoying this spot with those roses and the heliconias. The dahlias, not much to report there, unfortunately. If you remember, I planted these up and then noticed holes in the ground all around everything. So you may not be able to see what I'm talking about. There's a dahlia right there and another one back there. And there's a few other teeny tiny ones in the mix. So those were ground squirrel holes that were going through and chewing things up. And I know that I could always put a, like a dome over the top of mesh dome, wire dome, but that's not gonna keep the chipmunks and the ground squirrels from digging down under there and chewing on the roots. So this is what I got from them. It's not much, but it's better than nothing. Even if I can't get them big enough to flower, I at the very least just wanna get some nice healthy tubers out of those to lift and store. An alocasia here that I didn't plant. I assume that that's just something that fell off of one last year and it just, it, came back this year, which is shocking because that two weeks in February, you would not think an alocasia would return in the ground here in 6B, but it's close to the pavement. There's a sidewalk right here, so maybe that kept it warm. I don't really know, as I even noticed that there's another teeny tiny one that you guys probably won't even be able to see amongst the, there's a lot of weeds in here. I also scattered a bunch of seed and then weeds started to pop up at the same time. So I was like, I don't know, since I scattered seed, what do I, what do, I do then? I'll just have to very meticulously go out and pull out the weeds without getting the seedlings that are starting to come up. I don't know. Anyways, there is another alocasia. It's just a tiny leaf. You won't even be able to see it, but it's popping up from back there too. Didn't plant it there, but I always have some plants in this background every year and it must have just been a chunk of root that survived. It's another angle of everything over there. I was going to mulch this whole area and then uh, the bunch of seedlings started to come up that I had scattered. I guess they got blown over. So I'm gonna let them take off a little bit more before I go ahead and mulch that spot because I don't wanna kill the seedlings. I don't think that'd be a good idea. Look at these impatients. How pretty is this? Just a month ago, maybe five or six weeks ago, this looked pretty barren. and just had tiny itty bitty little sad plants in it and it has filled out and it's looking absolutely glorious. I do need to set something on top of that to help cover it up. That would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Crepe myrtles starting to push out over the front of those. So I need to give that a prune because I don't want it shading things too terribly much there by things. I mean, there are colladiums back there that you can barely even see because these impatience just grew so much faster than I expected them to. And what a beautiful rainbow of flowers. Isn't that just stunning? I love it. My eyes are always pulled in this direction every time I come outside. It's amazing what just having some compost and some drip irrigation can do to get things growing with minimal effort and their impatience, right? Impatience don't take a ton of work to get going. They're loving life, looking really good here. I didn't use any starter fertilizers this year, not on anything. Well, at least not since like, I would say May, because that's when I started getting really serious about looking into finding a dog trying to get a companion, a playmate for Toby. And my experience has always been whenever I use like a biotone starter or any of the ones from Job's, it's just the dogs, they stick their nose in the ground. It smells really good to them. They start digging things up. And I figured since I was going to be getting another dog that it would be a better idea to just, maybe not. So I just stuck with compost. It's kind of the same difference as far as just enriching the soil is concerned, but they haven't been paying too much attention to this. I do sometimes take Turbo out to the grass over here, and if he's not on a leash, he will just make a quick bolt, <laughs> disappear into the impatience. So there's a spot right here, just right there where they're kind of falling forward where he jumps in there. Again, that's why he's never allowed out here unsupervised, because it only takes half a second and he'll jump right in there and start tearing things apart. That's what puppies do, that's why we love them. The Super Junior Vista bubble gums are doing really well in this container, not so much in this one because this one was one that got knocked over in the storm. So I just got that put back into that container last night. Just got that redone. I put some more gravel in the bottom and some old weights down in there to get it to be extra heavy so it couldn't pull back over and gave it a slight prune. It had a couple fronds on it that it that just didn't need. They were starting to brown out and not look great. This one has a frond on it that looks like it got broken last night. I'm gonna need to get the tree trimmers out to get that one down. It'll look a lot better when that's gone. That's bugging me. This is, I think, one of the first years that I didn't have any sweet potato vines potted up in any of the pool planters, and it felt weird 
but I didn't want to plant them in these containers because of their toxicity. And uh, I was still on the fence wondering about whether or not I'd be getting another dog this year. So I just didn't use them, period. And I guess it's a grass is always greener sort of thing. I kind of miss them, even though every time I plant them, I get annoyed with them because they're really big and bushy. And then they grow down and take over and there's like a hilling effect between the sweet potato vines and then the petunias. But there's just something about that vivid green with the blue on the pots that, yeah. Oh, maybe next year. I'm gonna try Creeping Jenny. There are other trailers that I could give a shot in those pots. Succulent seashell, looking good. Haven't touched it since I planted it. Just gave it a watering and just left it alone. It's doing pretty well there. It's, you know, succulents. Don't, they don't need much. Maxillaria, the coconut orchid. Love it. It's very happy as well are the pedicets. They are massive. These things took off this year. There's an entire walkway that goes through here that's just gone. It's just been eaten alive by the pedicets japonicus, the butterburrs. Making sure to say it because I was going to ask about what they are. There's a video that I did about them, but that's their name. I'm just type in butterbur in Google and you'll find out a lot more about it. They do have some snail damage on them. I did spread some snail bait. So hopefully that'll start doing something. It's been a few weeks. Maybe I need to reapply. And the hydrangeas. Oh, they're so pretty. I love them so much. These are the vanilla strawberry hydrangeas. Not my favorite variety to have standardized as far as the panicle hydrangeas are concerned, just because they wilt and fall. Like, look at this one over here. Look at that. Look at it. Like, there's barely even room to walk over there because it is so top heavy that the flowers just weep down, which if that's your thing, that's cool. For me, I would like for them to stand up because it's this is a bit much. It looks kind of wild and messy. There's such pretty plants and so easy to grow that I don't care that much. But if I could do it again, I would probably pick one of the improved varieties like a Pinky Winky or a Quick Fire, something like that, where they've been bred to have stronger, more sturdy stems that stay upright and hold those flowers without flopping down. Although I think at the time of planting these, I don't, I don't know. I don't think that those even existed, especially not in standard form. It's been like, I don't know, four or five years, maybe even longer since I've had these potted up over here. So they should get moved into the landscape probably next spring or just get a really nice heavy repot with some fresh mix. This one down here has fresh mix, which I think is actually one of the reasons it's leaning some more than the other one, just because its root mass isn't as sturdy and strong as the other one. It's, that's probably why it's leaning. I do have it staked up, but there's just only so much you can do with a stick and some string. <laughs> I think I need to get somebody else over here to help push it back while I tie it up. That might make a pretty big difference because it's a shame to have such a lovely plant like this just hanging over and looking sad like that. But within the next few weeks, these will start to age out. They'll slowly get pink from the base in here and that'll start to fade to the very ends and they'll be white and pink for the rest of the season. Vanilla strawberry panic hydrangea, I absolutely love it. Oh, and remember earlier how I said I had a whole lot of Creepin' Jenny? Look at it. It's beautiful. It's like there's just a fountain of Creepin' Jenny coming out of the container over here. I'm not mad at it. Whenever I need Creepin' Jenny for a container, I just reach in, grab a clump and pop it on into the soil to make sure it has to you know, obviously I have to make sure it stays nice and moist so that it doesn't dry out so it can get rooted, but they transplant pretty easily. There's some honeysuckle. It's coming over the edge. I need to get that cleaned out. I don't want that rooting itself down into that gravel. That's the major wheeler honeysuckle that's over here. One of my favorites. Been in bloom since, what, mid to late May? Something like that. A hummingbird favorite. They have some of the most beautiful, vibrant flowers on them. It went out of focus as soon as I tried to get it in focus. They have a coral hue to them with that orange inside. So pretty. It looks its best when it first flushes out in the late spring, early summer, and then it just continually puts out sporadic blooms throughout the rest of the season. Gotta love a perennial that just keeps on blooming all season long, right? The things are looking pretty lush out here. I'm pretty happy with how the gardens turned out this season. Always room for improvement. It's a canvas, right? And I'm always adding to it and swapping things around and making changes. But this year, I haven't had to do much. Oh, the pumpkins. Do you see those? Oh, look at those. <laughs> They're everywhere. It's getting to be too much, I think. It was a fun idea to go ahead and just let them stay, the random seeds that made their way into the garden when I was cleaning out pumpkins last fall. But it's just, there's not much of a path here and it seems dangerous. I keep trimming them, I keep scooting them back, but I don't know. 
I think that maybe I should do something else right here. Not do something else, maybe just get them out of here. Or perhaps just thin it down to just having one pumpkin vine in here. There's gotta be like five or six of them in this entire space. I just don't think that that's necessary. Really don't need a squash patch on my patio. But it is fun. I love pumpkins. They're so much fun to grow and pick. We will see. I'll make up my mind with that later. Y'all know, those will probably still be here next month and I'll be saying the same thing. All right, that's going to do it. I wanted to make sure to include as many of the house plants and tropical plants and with all the perennials. Sometimes I forget to mention a lot of things, so I wanted to be thorough. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life. Everything's going beautiful. I do mean that. I hope everything's going great for you, but I just remembered one thing. The bonsai guy figured people may want to see how that's doing. Much has changed with it. The moss has dried up some, that's to be expected. The begonia itself, the growth has become much more sturdy on it and it's starting to put out a little bit of new growth. Not very much, but something. Okay, now we can grow. Like I said, hope you are doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Thanks for hanging out while I go through and talk about what's been going on, giving you all the updates getting to see how things are growing. Speaking of which, forgot about the silver dragons. There they are. These have just been growing nonstop. I repotted them, they've already rooted out and started to fill these containers and their containers are getting firm already. All right, I actually do think that that is everything. So of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye bye.